today's constitutions talk about evangelical poverty. How do we as buyers uh, live in the world um, according to the signs and signs in a poor and simple manner? This can be a very difficult topic sometimes because today's world, we're so materially uh, abundant and things are so readily available. But I wonder if it's worth taking a deeper look at these things in order to renew our commitment to, to God through the vows that we've professed and the people that we are called to serve. Like, are we living uh, the lives that we are called to live in the most genuine way possible? Sometimes we can mean well with what we do, but we can't help what other people think of us. It seems to be a universal reality. Just a so short story to highlight um, my experience of evangelical poverty or where I failed evangelical poverty. In the Australian province, when I was there, the priories were very far apart. So unless you wanted to drive 10 or 12 hours to the next priory, you'd have to fly. But at the same time, there was this culture among the young friars to wear the habit as much as possible, except you know, for practical things like mowing the lawn or exercise, pretty much the same as here. So I'm going to the airport, Sydney, Kingsford Airport, busy day, a lot of people. This is before COVID times. Um, and you know, the usual drill, you get dropped off at valet, you go pick up your ticket, uh, check in your bags, and then you go through security. And we know at security, there's someone always telling you to declare your electronics, uh, laptops, liquids, so on. So I'm standing there in security in the line, and I grab the tub, and out of my bag, I pull out my laptop and goes in the tub. I also pull out my smartphone, and I'll put it in a tub because it's electronic. I also had a tablet at the same time. I put that in the tub. And I have this quirky thing. If I'm traveling with my laptop, I also want to bring my hard disk, my portable hard disk. So that goes in the tub as well. So I'm, I'm in my own little world, just following procedure. And I hear this voice behind me. Oh, geez, monks are really high tech these days. And I woke up to myself, like, because it, it kind of caught me off guard. Um, in, I, I don't remember what I said. I laughed it off and had a joke with him. But I was really, I was wondering what kind of message was I conveying to this man who was standing behind me? Um, now, I don't like evangelizing very much. Sometimes I feel like I'm very socially awkward and very shy, but I know that it does have its graces and its blessings. But I wonder how it was for that guy standing behind me. What was, how was it when he saw a monk at the airport? Um, how should I have responded to him? Did he even know I was Christian or did he think I was a Buddhist monk? Um, it makes me wonder at all these missed opportunities where we could have been an agent of grace, a gentle reminder to the people in the world of that, the fact that the church is still alive or that Jesus is real. As for being a poor friar, I mean, I can say I'm poor in spirit, but unless you're Padre Pio, you can't really see my spirit. Um, some guys even joke that, you know, it, it costs a lot to look poor. Um, if you've seen my sandals, it's pretty, yeah. So I, I was wondering about this guy. You can't help what people think about you. I'm sure when he saw me at the airport, it might have reminded him of a man named Jesus. It might have reminded him about this thing called a Christian. But I'm sure when he saw me unload all my stuff, he was distracted by it. That, uh, that drew his attention. 
Um, how I don't feel that technology is really a bad thing. But I do know people can't help what they think about us. And all the time, we're, people, when they see us on the streets, they ask us about our lives, like, you know, are you guys allowed to carry phones? Or um, do you guys wear that all the time? Um, occasionally, young guys just really curious. Are you allowed out and stuff, you know? Um, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think they're great discussion starters uh, to, to get to know them, or get, for them to get to know you and open up your life to them. But I do believe, well, I do feel that the poorer, humbler, and simpler our lives are, the more effective our witness to the gospel message can be. In the sense that I feel it can give other people hope, like a gentle reminder. If he can do it, maybe, just maybe I can do it too.